Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about the enzyme class number 2, the transferases. The transferases principle is quite simple. Here we have the so-called donator, the A variable. This can be anything, like a protein or something. And B, the acceptor. X is what's being given around. Like the enzyme transferase makes A give the X it has a bond with to B, as you can see here. See, first X is bonded with A, and then after the reaction that is being catalyzed by the enzyme transferase, the A stands alone and the X went to the B. A very, very special example I really want to talk with you about is the amino acid transferases. Like, you see, the transferases are enzyme class number two. Then there's a subclass, the acyl transferases, which is 2.3, and then there are the amino acyl transferases, enzyme class number 2.3.2. Remember in the translation video when we talked about how the peptides are being formed in the ribosomes? If not, then what the hell are you doing? Go watch that now. <laughs> Anyways, the tRNA carries the amino acids to the peptides, to the ribosome. And basically what happens is that the peptidyl transferase, enzyme class number 2.3.2, .2, enzyme 12, makes the tRNA that has a bond with the uh, amino acid, give the amino acid to the peptide chain. And as you see here, the peptide chain has now another member that originates from the tRNA. And the tRNA is now, well, empty, you could say. The AMAC stands for the amino acid, and the PC for the peptide chain. Another very important transferase is the glycyl peptide N tetradecanoyl transferase, enzyme class number 2.3.1, enzyme 97. Before you look at this, before you try to read this, this is an enzyme that is responsible for the glucosylation in the uh, the endoplasmatic reticulum. Like, picture this. The endoplasmatic, the endoplasmatic reticulum has all these ribosomes. That's why it's called the rough endoplasmatic reticulum. And these ribosomes, they produce the proteins. And if you've been paying attention, you know that from the endoplasmatic reticulum, the proteins have to be carried to the Golgi apparatus. And in order for them to be carried properly and not to be damaged on the way, the endoplasmatic reticulum does something with it that's called glucosylation. And here's an example for that. We have the tetradecanoil and the coenzyme A, and then the glycyl peptide. Like the peptide is any protein that's being produced in the ribosome. It can be any protein. And the transferase catalyzes this reaction in which the tetradecanoil, which has a bond with the coenzyme A, leaves the coenzyme A and enters a bond with the glycyl peptide. This is just one example. There are many others. But listing them all will take way too long. Another very important transferase is the kinase. But this can best be explained in the context of ATP, which is another video. <laughs> and that's it for the video. If you like the channel and want to see more every Saturday, then feel free to subscribe. You can always change your mind and it's totally free.